Can you, oh, can we? Can I get you and Dan to do that? What I asked you to do for my friend. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we do that. We do that right do you now. Want me to just do it now. Look at Dan's next door. We can do that. No, we do yeah. that now. Post. I'm gonna go for a wee first. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. We're gonna film it. Yeah, come. No, I'm. <laughs> 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 Yeah, there's a big nail, just make sure you don't like split your head open every bit. Is the make camera sure on because I'll have to do extra reps if you saw this. <laughs> 1001, 1002, 1003. You know what's impressive about that is you're actually just using your fingers. Just how rough. Fuck that, I ain't that shit. Qual Qulak. Qulak. Hello! Ryan Lee Jones, two. Yeah. Stelios, two. Yeah. Arthur Jacob, five. Yeah. Nick Lewis, four. Craig Rooney, one. Hassam <laughs> Damdelon, Love two. Yeah. Damdelon, is that good, yeah? Damdelon. If you can put Dam the Dam Dam inside to it, that'll be nice. Hassam Damdelon! Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack Driscoll, three. Yeah. Adek Nuf, five. Daniel Glanville, four. Kofi Black, one. David Virgin, three. Andre Nostru, four. Seth Moan, three. Chris Lewis, four. Jay Toby, two. Come. That's everyone done apart from the uh, special guests, yeah? Yeah. A chariot fight. And the, the dwarf, yeah. did you put in one? No, the dwarf, I'm not going to put in the thing, but I don't, these, are the one, these are my main ones. We're in the tunnel, I'll tell them what chariot they're going to. Right, let me tell you this. Oh, I'm sweating. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give this to you in a second? Because you'll need one. These are the boxers when the fighters come in to get a wristband and shit. Tell them what change rooms they're in, yeah? Just say you're in change room number one. The four and five is the big cabin upside and it's hot in split between. So just say cabin outside, they'll know which one it is. My name's on. Five. The fighters? What time are they getting here? 2.30? Pick him up. Should we have the radios on or Because if you weren't looking, that might not be there anymore. You know what? I ate one already and I'm not even going to lie. Any good? It's delicious. It'll be your monster. No, no. I'm trying to get You can't really leave I'm trying to get Lynn. You can't really leave food around without me kind of like messing about it. The, the, the wolf, so I'm going to just put in the change room because that, that's disgusting. I'm going to go in there, mate. You left, I can't believe you left the sandwiches in there from last night. What? And you left them in there as well when you're saying that. You're going to find them out. You're saying there's it. still sandwiches in there? You're going to eat it. Live daily. Steve, you can't eat that, man. I will outwork you. And I'm telling you, if you go out there and like cows, you show up. Right. They can't outwork you. If you're a sandwich, they can't outwork you. No one gets vast up until you get to the cage, you understand? Yeah. I know we've got a couple of Thai guys, no Thai, we've got MMA going on as well. 
any tile will get on the canvas or the sides of the cage and they're grappling to get in their face on their skin. Um, as I long pointed out again, no water tipping over the head. I don't mind spray, no water tipping over the head. If in case someone does get knocked out and needs medical assistance, corner men, you do not get in the cage, you let the medics do the work. We've got a professional doctor in today and two medics. Doctor comes in, does the check, if the medic needs to be, they'll go in as well. Do not climb over the cage, do not jump over the cage. Okay, that's paramount. If someone is knocked out, seriously hurt, let the, uh, let the professional do the job first before you move in. Okay? I'm not going to have that today, I'm just going to move, I don't care who they are, they're not standing there, so we're going to move them. Andy's going to be on the cage door and he's only going to let in, as soon as the fight ends, it will be a doctor if he's conscious, it will be the medics and the doctor if they're unconscious. Corner will work, please respectfully wait, we'll let you in, it'll be all good. Thank you. Afternoon ladies and gents. Um, Basically, this is just about the production and the filming that's going to be taking place today. Um, Post-fight interviews will take place for any of the fighters, especially if we've done promotional work for you. We'd like to follow that up with promos. Um, cameras will be backstage, so just act normal. You, know? you don't have to feel a way about people filming you. It's cause just part of what you guys do. I was literally just going to say thanks to everyone stepping up, jumping in. I know we've worked really hard to put a show on. I know you've really worked really hard to, to put the fights on. And we are very grateful for that. And let's have a good night. Let's enjoy it. Let's put on a good show. K1 and Boxing, just come and see me over here. And we'll see you there. Hey, good. Good. My face above the water. My feet can't touch the ground. Touch the ground and it feels like. I can see the sands on the horizon every time You are not around, I'm slowly drifting away Wave after wave, wave after wave I'm slowly drifting And it feels like I'm drowning Pulling against the street, pulling against the to first start hosting the show? To first start hosting the show? Um, it's one of them things I probably should have done a little bit earlier than I actually done it. I may have procrastinated, which is something I don't uh, pride myself on at all. But um, ultimately, it, it was essential for the progress of the show and the brand, I think, to tie myself in with the brand and to be seen at the front end. Um, naturally there was sort of reservations about sort of stepping up and, and doing that is quite a big thing, it's a bit out of the comfort zone. I mean now the, the buzz is incredible, like if you see me backstage when I'm warming up, like I'm literally jumping up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, just firing to go out. What's the code yeah, if it locks? You know, Check everyone the code. So the fucking iPad. Oh, the Steve. Promo, yeah, and then you're coming out, yeah? And I said, well, Alright, so what? So what? Alright, who's got the walkie talkie? Okay, Leanne, Leanne. Okay, do you ready now? You, 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 want, to keep, you want to keep my walkie talkie? No, 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 yeah, so let them know when he's yeah, ready to come out, yeah? I'm going to go find him now. Damn. Alright. Alright. Little point. Turn up, turn up. What's up, what's up, what's up? I know, it's amazing. Fucking awesome. Huh? Get the piss before we do anything, sorry. Yeah. 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 Warming up for fucking, it's time to lift the roof, bruv. Yeah. Fucking about now. Yeah. Yeah. 
no brother. You, you have no idea. This. You think you know. Got this. But you have no idea. Are you ready to play the program? Oh, I'm so gas right now. Promo ready? Is the promo ready? Promo is ready, bro. I fucking hope so. But to find out. But the girl's going in before me, man. Check us out, O2 Arena. Buy tickets online, box office. O2 7. So that you can come down and have a good show. And what you give us is what they're going to give you back. Now, I'm going to introduce the next fight of the evening. This is the UK's first dwarf boxing match. Allow me to introduce into the red corner, Barry. PR production talent relations for Fury MMA. Um, unfinished business. <laughs> that is one crazy show. Like a lot of stuff, a lot of hard work, a lot of blood, sweat, tears, um, arguments, fights, hugs. Um, a lot of a lot has a, a lot has gone into this show. Um, what my role is is. Um, interviewer, um, post-fight interviewer. I've dealt with the photographers and the media side of things for the show. Um, additional promotional stuff like dealing with magazines and getting interviews out there on behalf of Fury MMA. Um, PR, public relations, um, talent relations as well, which is um, dealing with the fighters basically and all of the talent that comes into the promotion. It's a lot of hard work on the day, but at the same time, very, very rewarding. Um, I think one of my strong points is my communication skills, how I, I manage to deal with different people on different levels. And, you know, I think that's, I'd like to think that's made made me excel and a, a little bit more and also to help push Fury, you know, just that little bit further. And um, yeah, Fury is the team to look out for and yeah, we're, we're making moves and yeah, we're making big waves in the UK MMA scene. Ready?
Watch your pushing turn, right? Let's go. Very well. Um, helped organise all the tables and pretty much that was about it. Done all the Twitter feeds and Facebook and yeah, pretty much it. I'm Danielle. Um, pretty much on the admin side, promotion, um, marketing, um, liaisons with fighters. Um, helping out with the team on any tasks that they needed doing for the event. Um, yeah, a bit of everything, to be honest. Um, I'm Leanne, looked after all the fighters' ticket sales, the guest list, um, and a lot of the social media. Can you tell me what goes into running a show like Fury MMA? Do you really want me to answer that? A lot of hard work, a lot of time, um, a lot of dedication, passion, yeah. stress, stress, sorting the boys out, um, just trying to keep each other in line. That's good. A lot of dedication, hard work, meeting up with each other, communicating. I think that's the biggest thing because we're, a, we're quite a big team now. So putting on such a professional show at the O2 requires quite a lot of support and uh, specialism um, without talking to each other. That's one of the biggest things. So meeting and group, yeah, meeting we're up with each other and talking. A lot of organisation, definitely. Definitely a lot of passion. You've got to enjoy it. Fighters putting out is a massive challenge, I think. It can cause a lot of disruption to the whole team. Um, ticket selling, I think, as well. Well, selling tickets and Yeah, and the recall. The yeah. recall, yeah. The recall. Issuing table contracts, plan. yeah, table plan. It's all, it's all challenging, isn't it? I think everything's a challenge until you just learn, you learn it's every just, show. Yeah, it's just how we deal with it. I think we deal with it quite well. We've uh, put on quite a few shows now, so we know what the problems that will arise, and we we're quite forward thinking on, on how to address that now. So working yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. I think from the show before to that to the last show, it, everything's changed yeah. a lot and dramatically. We're experts for experience. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. You think you can do this to me? You motherfuckers will be playing basketball in Pelican Bay when I get finished with you. 
23 hour lockdown. I'm the man up in this piece. You'll never see the light of day. Who the fuck you think you fucking with? I run shit here. You just live here. Yeah, that's right. You better walk away. Go on, walk away, because I'm going to burn this motherfucker down. King Kong ain't got shit on me. Headhunted, scouted and recruited. PFP's number one enforcer and hitman. Denzel Two Guns Duncan makes his long-awaited debut on the UK's fastest rising MMA promotion, Fury MMA. Two Guns debuts at Unfinished Business. Unfinished Business. I'm coming.
Gresham, South East London with PFP's Denzel Two Guns Duncan. Hot off of unfinished business at Fury MMA. Denzel, brilliant performance. Tell me a little bit about your mind state going into this show. Well, mindset was obviously, we was in my manner, South London. Um, I had a load of people come out to support. Um, and obviously, I had to get the W. It was a must. On the night, I entered your changing room when you was getting ready, and yeah. you were extremely intense. It was like to the point where I was like, you know something? Maybe it's a good idea that I don't be in here right now. What was your mind yeah, state like yeah. actually going into this? Because I could actually feel that atmosphere is like you was kind of ready for war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, at that at that specific moment in time, I was just like fully focused. Um, obviously, nothing was going to um, distract from what I had to do. Like he said, do you know what I mean? Like, that focus was so intense. Do you know what I mean? It was, I was ready for war. It was, it was what it was, do you know what I mean? So I was, I was in my battle state, ready for war. What was your, what was your training like? I mean, watching the fight, I saw the left hand look sharp, the over the top right look sharp. I saw some spectacular like kicks and that as well. I mean, what kind of training did Danny kind of, you know? People look at me and they'll kind of box me in, you know, our kind of power fight, or bombs and, do you know what I mean? Kind of like a brawler type fighter, but I think I kind of showed there that I've got different ribbons to my bow in, in the sense that, you know what I mean? I was throwing these kind of flashy kicks. And I mean, these are things I always do in training, do you know what I mean? I've got it, I've got it in my locker. And do you know what I mean? The things that me and Dan were going through was just like, you know, do them. You're, you're capable of doing them. Do them. Try it. See what happens. You know what I mean? Try a thing. And um, yeah, as you can see, like that was the result of doing those things in training beforehand. Yeah. Reflecting on the fight now, um, in hindsight, obviously, which hindsight is a blessed thing to have afterwards. But I feel that like I could have had a finish. I'm a bit disappointed I didn't finish him. Um, but yeah, no, from, from going forward, from this last bout, it's just about winning wins, continue to win, wrap those W's up, and um, do you know what I mean? Just get everyone talking and um, get everyone knowing my name. Anybody you'd like to big up? Um, boy, I've always got a big up. Um, my trainer, obviously, um, Danny Stanley Beaver, I've got a big up. Every man from um, Power for Pine. Um, special shout outs to individuals such as, um, you know, True professional, been around the game for a long time. Um, Richard, um, Richard the Myth Griffin, um, big up pounds. Do you know what I mean? Always an influence in the gym. You know, always encouraging all the man them. Um, I've got a big up all of my team members. I got, a, I got a shout out to um, Barry, Manimal Ryan. It's everyone, everyone that had an influence and, a, and an input. Do you know what I mean? Building up to, building up to my last bout. So you know what I mean? I got a shout out to to all of my PFP family. Like it's all a, it's a collective thing. You know, there's no I in team, as they say. Denzel 2, Guns Duncan, and we'll catch up with you shortly. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men, with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines, you are not cattle, you are men. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure.
So, hot off of Fury MMA's unfinished business, we've come down to Gravesend today to catch up with Charlie Boy Howard. Charlie Boy, fantastic performance over at Fury MMA. Um, tell me about your performance and your whole experience of the show. Um, it was it was wicked, really, really, really good show. Um, I felt comfortable. Everybody there, really, really well, and organised show. Really, really good, and the fight went the same as usual. Another win in the bag. You fought against Harry Bentley. It was um, a hotly anticipated contest. Tell me about your um, game plan going into this fight. Yeah, it was a bit, bit of back and forth on Twitter. He was saying his bit, I was saying my bit. Like, like we said to each other after the fight, ticket sales. We, we both got to sell tickets. So we, so we, uh, back and forth sort of thing. So yeah, and um, my game plan. I, I, I didn't have any footage on him, like the guys I've, I've fought before. Like I said, I think I've had one guy I fought before and I had footage on him. Everybody else, I've had to do my own thing and that, that was, I just, I believe in my schools, everything I do, and I went out there and done the business. Lisa Mafia, what was Lisa Mafia doing there, Charlie? Ah, uh, nah, me, me, and, me and Lisa are friends. Back when it, I didn't train, and I was a little bit chubbier than I am now, a little bit shorter. I used to walk my dog for miles and miles and it was a, it was a good looking dog. I had a nice dog and she always used to hang out of a window. I like your dog, I like your dog and that's how we became friends and then she obviously started realising like when I started training I used to talk to her about it and then she said I'll come and support you so that's when she came and watched me fight. Speaking before you sort of said um, you could actually see when you felt that you had won this fight. Um, at the ending of the first round. I mean, tell me exactly what you saw and why you felt that. Well, we had, it was same old, same old. We, we were fighting, he was doing his bit, I was doing my bit. It went to the ground. I, I feel comfortable there with anybody. I have the best the best training partners in, in Jiu Jitsu. Like my, my team, Team VN, my coach, Val Mineta. We have the best Jiu Jitsu team. So when it goes to the ground, I feel comfortable. And like I said, it, it went to the ground. And um, I, I sort of stood up and I had his, he had his feet on my hips and he was throwing up kicks and, and things like that. And I was just moving them out of the way. And I had all of his legs and I pushed his legs to the side and I, and I jumped down sort of thing and I hit him with like a really, really, really strong hand. And then I stood straight back up and I looked. I don't know what it was, but we made eye contact. And for that split second, I looked into his eyes and I knew I broke his heart sort of thing, I broke his will and from that point I knew I'd won that fight. Any last words from Charlie Boy Howard? All I can say is thank you to all, all my supporters, everybody that comes to watch me fight, thank you very much. You, you really do, when you have to get up at 5.30 on the morning to go and lift weights, go running and then you've got to go training after work because I also work six days a week. Like, it's, it, it does get hard, so everybody supporting me, giving me good messages, and when I get out there in the cage, you really do, like, like help. And that's, that's all I can say. Thank you to Fury for giving me the opportunity before. Thank you for letting me fight, and thank you for giving me another opportunity to fight on September the 14th. And just real quick, my Instagram, charboybjj. I also have Twitter on the same, Charboy, charboybjj. Follow me. Always open for sponsorships, things like that. Keep up the support. Thank you very much. We we'll see you September 14th. Okay, Dan, I want you to explain to me your role as a matchmaker and what it consists of. My role as a matchmaker with Fury MMA, he, you know, obviously matching up the fights. And it consists of me getting knowledge of different gyms and what fighters they produce. Um, usually ask the guys to send forward the names, the applications, if they're interested in fighting. I get the names, record, weight, and what the experiences are, if they're amateur, or if they're a pro, if they're K1 or boxing. Um, if, you know, I've got a massive board and I, and I match them up. And I know from the experience of the quality of the gym that they come from and the quality of fights that I've had in the past and what shows they fought on, whether or not they'll be suitable for, for the fights that are fighting such person. Um, it's just sort of keeping the fighters safe. That, that is one thing, making sure that the night runs smoothly, the fights run smoothly, and everyone is abiding by the MMA rules that are stated. And yeah, just making sure that the, the par most paramount thing is um, fighter safety. With that being said, since you are the matchmaker, what makes you decide to choose 
what actual fights to ref? Yeah, um, at the moment, you know, I've taken a bit of a step back and doing the main half of the cards because, you know, for me, he's, I'm trying to, as you saw on the last show, we had a couple of other referees coming up and helping out on the show. Um, Jackie, Sam, Ron, Garth, they're all there. And, you know, they, they, they're coming up and they've done great refereeing on the show. Myself, I, you know, we, we sit down as a group and, you know, I play, I play it fair. You know, some fights I might get that I don't want and some fights I do... Which I do want. I don't. I don't solely sit there and go, okay, you're doing this, you're doing this. We sit down as a group and 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 decide what's what and who's going to referee what. How do you manage to stay calm whilst refereeing a fight that you particularly are interested in watching and seeing? If I'm yeah, um, you know what, any fight goes, I'm there to referee. I'm not there to watch in 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 the cage. So my focus isn't like. Oh, what punch is he going to throw in there? My focus is, is the safety aspect or keeping an eye on them that they are abiding by the rules. Um, I can always watch the fight over again on DVD when it comes out. Simple. push you forwards and I come in here, trained hard with the boys, D the new champ now, yourself, you know, just, if you, if you grind it out, if you, there's no gold about digging, man, so I'm digging away and just biding my time, taking a few names. Ty, right, tell me about your training camp leading up to this fight, mate. I mean, training camp is just always, always tough. I'm always, I'm in here making mistakes and so just ironing out all the, all the old stuff, all the creases, making everything, Precise, you know. I was trying to work on my attributes, like the, the range and everything. Like I was just making, preparing for everything. I was prepared for anything that he was going to throw at me. Yeah, I was, I was just ready for anything he was going to throw at me. I was ready for a fight. So, Ty, what made you uh, fight with Fury in the way, man? What made you go to that organisation? I saw an opportunity. I mean, I know my opponent pulled out, but I've soon got another opponent that was, that was organised. It was at the O2. I mean, who would get to go there and, and perform? So, I thought, I'd, I got to the O2 and I'm like, why not? And um, 
I mean, I'm, be I'm begging for that belt, man. I'm begging for it. I know I've made a, a strong enough case to, to go take it because I feel like it's mine. I feel like I can go take that. When are we uh, expecting to see you next at Fury? Well, um, through, the, through the great run, through the boys and the guys at Fury, I'm pretty sure they have uh, answered my request as such. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to get a shot at the title. And it, it won't be just a shot at a title. I'm, I feel like it's mine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take what's mine, and that's the way it's gonna be. It was not a natural disaster, all right. What's really happening is that you're hiding something out there, and I have a right to know. You have no idea what's coming. And it is going to send us back to the Stone Age. How difficult is it for you to keep your composure before you enter the cage? Really, it's, it's not difficult at all because I kind of I switch into somebody else. Like the guy just the guy just before that fight or any fight is a different person. It's not it's not the guy you're speaking to now. I mean, that that guy's a cold guy, and like a lot of people fight off of anger or emotion. I don't. I I fight because I love it. It's a sport, and I want to compete. So fighting angry or getting myself amped up isn't really how I work. I just get in there, do my business, do my job, go home. Simple. Ushered in a new dawn, Fury MMA. We have the new Fury MMA champion, Damon, Godzilla Lake. Um, Damon, tell us a little bit about how the whole day of unfinished business sort of came about and how you felt coming in towards this fight with Thomas Szczynski. I mean, you know, like, Thomas is a big guy. He's got a name and all that. He's had a following for a while. He's got heavy hands. Everyone knows he's got heavy hands. He knocks guys out for fun. So obviously I was weary of that coming into the fight. You know, I mean, I've been training hard. I quit my job four months ago to do this properly. A lot of guys don't put enough time into this. And I think to be a champion, you've got to be dedicated. So that's what I'm doing with myself these days. So I had to make sure I was focused and ready for Thomas. I mean, you know, I'm respectful to all my opponents. I don't wish them any harm or ill will, but it's a, it's a combat sport at the end of the day, and it's him or me. Speaking of your training, we witnessed you pick up a 20 stone man in an absolutely <laughs> incredible feat that I couldn't believe it personally, and you dropped him on the floor. I mean, tell me what, what kind of training did you kind of go through leading up to the fight? I just, I, you know, I don't want to tell people too much, but I kind of, I do, I do my explosive training, I do my, my, you know, my fitness, and my cardio, and I do my, you know, the typical aspects of fighting. You know, I'm not saying I do my kickboxing and my boxing and my, everyone does the same stuff. You know what I mean? But I just made sure I was prepared to take on a big guy because I've lost a lot of weight. I mean, I, I, my, my nutritionist has got me looking the best I've ever been, and I was still strong at that weight. So obviously, something, obviously, I did something right. You've been around for a little while. I mean, what made you decide to fight for Fury? Well, I kinda, uh, my problem is, yeah, is I make a little bit of noise, people start talking about me, and then something will happen. Like, I had a baby, I had personal issues, like things happen, yeah, and I'll disappear for a little while. So the idea was, 
come back onto a decent show where people people know people know the name of Fury and all that. Come back, make a bit of noise, get everyone seeing me instantly, and then work from there. And that's that's worked out for me, you know. Going from there, I mean, next big show in a few months. Um, what are your plans? Oh, is there anybody in particular you'd like to fight, or is there any names that you want to strike off your list? I I I leave that to my management because as a fighter, you have an ego, and egos get you in trouble. Yeah. So I just let my manager tell me who I'm going to fight, and I fight. Godzilla. Where did the moniker Godzilla come from? It's, uh, it's funny because I used to, I did a lot of gi jiu jitsu um, a few years back. I was doing it all the time. And I, I was rolling with one of our head coaches, um, Thiago Monstro Borges. And we had, a, we, had a, we had a good round, good round. Um, a lot of to and fro at the time. And afterwards he said to me, oh, you're too strong, man. We're going to call you Godzilla. And that's stuck. That was it. <laughs> that was it. That was like four years ago. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. We look forward to seeing you back on the next show, I'll and um, we'll see you guys soon. How do you feel the show went? Unfinished business, how do you feel it went? In a word, if I had to sum it up, I'd use the word awesome. It was a really, really good show. I don't feel there was any problems with it whatsoever. It ran totally smoothly. We had a really good crowd, really good fights. Um, Overall, it's a total success. It's the best show we've ever done. And it's not the best show we'll ever do, but it's definitely the best show we've ever done, so it shows marked progress throughout. What made you decide to go back to the O2, considering the previous controversy with the last show? Oh, because of the controversy on the last show, we had to go back. Even if I was planning to go to another venue than the O2, after the last show, I I made a I would have made a definite decision to go back to the O2 just simply to make the statement that we're here, like your foolish like sort of antics, you the you you handful of idiots, you can't spoil this, you will never spoil this, that like our positive energy is, is will overwhelm and destroy your your negative crap. Like you have two hopes and and neither of them looking good. No, totally. Like I mean, that's why we called it unfinished business, obviously, because last time. There was a few things we needed to tie up, but no, it was unfinished business. We came in and we finished the business. Like, no one can ever dispute that. What next for Fury MMA? <laughs> um, well, if I told you that, I'd have to kill you, wouldn't I? You've obviously not read the 48 Laws of Power. Unfortunately, um, I can't really divulge that at this point in time. I would love, I would love, I'd love to tell you what's next. Because there are some very, very very like big things in the pipeline but you're just gonna have to wait and see if this is to end in fire then we should all burn together watch the flames climb high into the Calling out Father, oh, stand by and we will watch the flames burn all along the mountainside. And if we should die tonight, then we should all die together, raise a glass of The flames burn over and on the mountainside. Desolation comes upon the sky. Now I see fire inside the mountain. I see fire burning the trees. And I see
Sie fallen.